What's up guys? TK here with Beamer Man, and I'm giving you guys my thoughts and impressions on my BMW i3. Um, after owning the device, oh, I was going to say the device, after owning the car for about six months. Now I'm at the charging station right now, if you didn't know, and you have one of the rapid charging plug i3s, and let me just give you a quick look at what that looks like. You get free charging through EVgo. Uh, and a bunch of other DC fast chargers. Now a DC fast charger actually has two different connections on it, not just one. So you can see the different things with it there. And you actually get free charging at their stations uh, for the first two years or three years, which is pretty pretty good deal. Now in the time that I've owned the BMW i3, I've only encountered a couple of issues. One, the rims are super soft. You can see here, I had run over something, or ran into something, uh, and it, now some of this stuff will probably buff off on this side, but this part here, like literally scraped the metal. Look at this. It literally will flake off. I should probably take it off so I don't get it stuck in my tires. But there is that. Um, let's see, what else did I have issues with? Um, the high beams, I, and I don't know if it's a common issue, but the high beams on mine, which are located not in the headlight, but in the bumper, um, I've gone through two sets on both sides so far. Um, tire bubbles. Now that happened via potholes. If you remember my trip, I drove this thing from South Beach, Miami, Florida, all the way to Las Vegas uh, for the Consumer Electronics Show this year, and I uh, had that issue. Outside of that... Mechanic -wise, mechanically wise, I've had no issues with this car. Now, <clears throat> people have asked me, well, can you take this thing <clears throat> on long road trips? Is it, is it feasible? Is it possible? And the short answer to that is, yeah, of course it is. You can definitely take this thing on long road trips. Now, you're going to get about 100 miles on the electric range depending on how you drive and that means at like 50 55 miles an hour if you're like me and you hit highway speeds and you're going 70 plus forget about that shit it's not going to happen as far as room and the like and you guys are gonna be like damn the car is kind of dusty it is i just had somebody in here earlier it's kind of dusty uh people one of the main questions i've got is well how does this wood uh you know handle over time no problems with this cracking it's been in the hot florida sun a lot no issues with the seats they've handled themselves uh, appropriately with no issues no issues with the door uh, and or the tent um, really not a lot of problems the only issues like I was getting back to the um, uh, long distance trip is I recommend having a gas can which I do keep in my uh, front of my car in the front up here now here's the thing if you do get into a front-end collision you could cause an issue I'm not recommending that you put a gas can there I have to do that so somebody doesn't try to sue me uh, but if you do have a two gallon gas tank up here uh, with your two gallon tank right here and you do hack the i3 system so you get full access to this um, you could probably go about 160 miles 100 to 180 miles on just fuel without having to stop plus your electric range you're probably looking at about 260 miles which is not bad so it does make it feasible for you to be able to take a little bit of a road trip 500 miles won't kill you um, but we did 3,000 miles, I think it was somewhere around 3,000 miles, you know, 2,900 miles or 2,800 miles from South Beach to Vegas. Maybe it was over 3,000 miles. I don't know. It took us three days and a couple hours to make it, and that's because I was having to stop every 80 miles and put gas in this. And I really didn't touch the gas can because it was freezing cold in the, in the uh, front. I just wanted to keep filling it up and keep moving. Um, I did get a chance to stop at several charging stations. When I mean several, there was one in Texas one in new mexico where i could plug into a dc fast charger now there's plenty so you know there are plenty of these level two charging stations but here's the thing it's not feasible for you to be able to take a long road trip with these level two chargers and that's because these level two chargers take three hours to four hours to charge your car now my car was at zero percent or was, you know i was on the wrecks when i got here and right now, look at this. In 11 minutes and 30 seconds, my car went from like 8% to 53%. Like that. You can see it's only been on here like 12 minutes, okay? 
It's got 17 more minutes of charging time. Now you can put it back on the charger and it will rapid charge. You can charge it 100%. I usually only charge it on the rapid chargers up to 80. And then I plug it in when I get home. Um, which, you know, by the time I wake up in the morning, I have a full charge and no issues. Now let's go into the inside of the car. Another issue I have had with my... Whoa! My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Another issue I've had with my i3, and it's charging, so it's not going to let me go into ready mode, but let me show you this, is this, the auto PDC malfunction. Now, the check engine light is on. <coughs> Sorry. The check engine light is on strictly because of the um, the car not being into full mode. You can see it's not lit up. There's usually a, black, a blue ring around here. We'll get to that when I finish the video. Now, here's the thing. Um... The PDC sensor, there's a sensor up in the front, up in the front left that went bad. Another sensor on the front right that went bad. And, uh, yeah, it's just, and that's the thing that lets you automatically park this. And this i3 can literally park it, parallel park itself, which is super cool. Um, but those once those sensors go bad, and I've had two go bad now, um... It's just a pain in the ass. Now, part of the reason that they go bad, if you're in salt environments, and I'm in South Beach, Miami, you will have those problems. Um, if you take it on the beach, if you're up towards, like, say, Daytona, or if you're on the West Coast, where they some of the little areas where they let you park on the beach, you those sensors will go bad. So just be prepared for that. They're not stupid expensive. They're like 70 bucks to replace. I apologize, guys. I'm getting over a cold. But there is that. Um, AC... Everything else in here has worked great. I haven't really had any issues there. The, um, I almost call this the MMI system. Sorry, I got an Audi too, guys. Um, <clears throat> I will say this. The tire uh, system thing has been cool. It has saved my ass multiple times to be able to check that PSI while you're driving. Um, the map system, awesome. I really do love the uh, ability to get in here. And, and then connect the drive. If you're parked and you're sitting somewhere and you're just like, let me just check, see what's, you know, what the deal is with the news. Let me get in here. The ability to set a service appointment right in here through iDrive. I totally love that. I really do. I think it is awesome. Um, so do I recommend this car? Let me turn some lights on in here for y'all. Do I recommend this car? If you are only driving in the city, right? Um, if you're driving, like, say, between Miami and Tampa, you know, like, doing some crazy commuting, or, like, Miami to Fort Lauderdale, yes. If you're in New York, if you're in Jersey City and you have to go into New York every day, do I recommend this car? Yes. If you live in Cambridge or Falmouth, if you're up in Massachusetts, or you're, like, out in Revere and you got to go into Boston every day, do I recommend this car? Yes. If you're driving from Boston to D.C. several times a week, do I recommend this car? Hell no. It will drive you nuts. Like I said, this is a inner city commuter car. It's cool for 80 mile trips. Like if you had to go 80 miles for work and plug in when you get to work, 80 miles back, you'll love this car. If you got to go long distances, it's a pain in the ass. I just have to be honest. Love the technology. Love what BMW has done with this. And you guys know I got a lot of different BMWs. Um, and this one is one of my favorites. It's fun to drive, the acceleration, the pickup. The zero to 60, which is not really that fast. It just feels that fast. It's like a roller coaster when you know it's about to drop. That feeling you get when you punch it in this car, amazing. So uh, there you have it. There's my thoughts and impressions on it. The car has been charging here for a few minutes. And look, we went from 52 miles of range to 60 that quick. See that? So the rapid charger does do its job. I do like the level three charger. And legitimately in 30 minutes, you can go from on the Rex or gas power, which you can see I got there, 49 miles. You can see I got three quarters of a tank of uh, fuel, but I got 110 miles of range right now. I could unplug and rock on out for the rest of the evening if I wanted to. But for 30 minutes of time for me to plug in and to be able to run this for the next two or three days with no problem, it's an automatic win. It's free fuel. It's free, you know, getting it around. And the car actually gets, you'd be surprised, I get a lot more looks in this car than I do the M5, the M6, the 650, um, the A8. It doesn't matter. Whatever, I'm, I get way more looks in this little i3 uh, than I do with anything else, which is insane. So there you have it, guys. My thoughts and impressions, six months of ownership in on the BMW i3. 
I think it's an awesome car. I think it's a great technological feat for BMW. I hope they stick with it. I know they lost a lot of their BMW i team to some fuck ass company in China. Sorry. But I hope BMW stays with it because here's the thing Volkswagen is coming. You're going to see Audis and Porsches and Volkswagens all in that conglomerate. You know, come 2018, 2019, they're going to push five to seven electric models. And if BMW doesn't stay on top of their shit, they could be in trouble. Anyways, beer man here. Let me know what you guys think. Hit that thumbs up button if you like what I do. Subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys in our next one. Peace.